on the downtown east side. Woo! It's a clear demand, it's a fair demand, it's a moral demand. I was privileged to attend the signing ceremony this morning that Karsha mentioned. Uh, it was incredibly moving uh, to, to, be, to be there at the anniversary of the Save the Fraser Declaration, saying no to Enbridge Pipelines. Here, here. Speakers. And there were many speakers, many chiefs spoke, and they talked about what this resource extraction model means to them. A loss of culture, a loss of land, displacement. That is what people are afraid of. Where are people displaced? Two, they're displaced to here. And now they're being displaced again. That's what we're hearing, being displaced again. Two, as Harsha said, the real housing policy is prison, <laughs> including private prisons, so that you can make some more money off of incarceration after you make money off of gentrification. It's all connected, it's one story. Uh, I did an interview today on a call-in radio show that will remain nameless. Um, and one of the callers explained to me that there isn't a need for an Occupy movement in Canada because in Canada doesn't have the same problems as the United States. It doesn't have these problems of inequality or politicians that are owned by corporations. Um, the action that took place here two days ago at Occupy Blue no, Pages no, puts the lie to that. Yeah. It exposes oh, oh. it as a lie. I, I've been part of the Occupy movement, and when I spoke to our friends in New York City, what I said about what they did that was so powerful was in a country that is claiming to be broke, to not have the money to pay for basic services, they set up camp in this the site of maximum abundance, that being Wall Street. And they said, this country isn't broke. This country doesn't have a budget crisis. It has a distribution crisis. The money is stuck at the top. And I think it is so exciting and so moving that as the Occupy movement evolves and changes, now what we see is people occupying spaces at the site of maximum exclusion, the site of maximum inequality, to show the other side of that. And that's what's happening in this city, and that's what we're a part of today. And I'm very proud to be with you, standing with you today. This is the, one of the most unequal cities in North America. It has the least affordable housing, not in Canada, not in North America, not in the Commonwealth. Most, un, uh, most unaffordable housing in Canada, the United States, New Zealand, Australia. It's supposed to take three years for housing to be affordable. It should take three years of income to be able to buy a home. In Vancouver, it takes nine and a half years, okay? Gentrification doesn't just drive housing up in this, housing prices up in this neighborhood. It drives the cost of everything up in this neighborhood. And it drives the, the, the cost of everything up across the city. And this is, the, this is the, the, the model that's being put forward. So I think it's really important to challenge this idea that Canada doesn't have any problems, that we're so much better than the United States. Here, here. This is the here, part here. of the yep. country that nobody wants to look that's at, right. right? We know that. And you know, there was so much anger at Occupy Vancouver, mm -hmm. anger at seeing homelessness, Jeez. anger at seeing drug addiction and mental health problems. They just wanted to sweep it away. Yeah. Bring it back to the downtown east side. That's what they were saying. But now in the downtown east side, they're trying to sweep it away from here. So this is a disgrace. This is a disgrace. And I'm proud to be with you saying no, drawing the line. There's been a lot of drawing the lines today. And as, as Harsha said, we've heard enough of we'll the we're lines. Gonna put a wall up. That's we're not right. going to let your pipelines through. And I'm so proud to be with you today saying we're not going to let your condos through either. Williams? Yeah! Yeah! Mark, Mark, Mark Williams! 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 
stores up and down the street. I don't know if you, if you saw them saying, welcome Naomi Klein, saying that he, you can buy a, a copy of the Shock Doctrine for $61 at Spartacus Books. Okay, we, we called Spartacus Books a few minutes ago. They don't have any copies of the Shock Doctrine, but they have a copy of No Logo for $6. Yay! So all I can say is, I hope he doesn't plan on marking up condominiums yeah. as much as he marked up my book. This is yeah. Trust we don't have your book because it's sold out. I would say to Mark Williams that he's acting as if this is a game. Yeah. And he is playing with people's yeah. lives. That's and right. he should be deeply ashamed of himself. This yeah. is not a game. This is the best survival. Yeah. Yeah. It says, Sequel 138 welcomes displacement. Naomi Klein supports downtown east side fight against gentrification. Ah.